Namaste. I'm laughing because the, uh, the UPS system in this house was charging. There had been a low power this afternoon. And every time I tried to turn on my lights, you know, to do the video, it would start, the fan would start, it would make a lot of noise. And so I finally decided, oh heck, I'm just going to do the video anyway. And as soon as I sat down and turned on the camera, boom, it stopped. See, th this, <laughs> this is the kind of thing that happens again and again and again. And it shows me, it gives me the message that Ma is directly involved and controlling things and always encouraging or rewarding behavior that puts faith and trust in her. You know, and this happens, I don't know, <laughs> I stopped counting, I stopped keeping crack, you know, because it's just too much. It happens at least once or twice a day. And sometimes more than that. You know, like, like when you say something particularly profound and then a, a dog barks or a gecko goes off or, you know, somebody blows their horn out on the road or something to confirm it, you know. The gecko is especially cool because they're supposed to be reincarnations of fallen brahmanas. <laughs> but anyway, that existence rhymes with the one who has surrendered to the Shakti. I mean, it really shouldn't be surprising. <laughs> if our philosophy is correct, huh? and it is, it just confirms it again and again, that these things aren't coincidences. They are, what did, what did Jung call it? Well, it's basically that reality rhymes and that thinking of something all the time brings it into being and it becomes a reality. So when we look out over the vast wasteland of the internet and we see thousands and thousands and millions of posts and articles and whatnot without any content of God consciousness at all. And when we, when we look in the world and we see the activities that people are engaged in with no relation to God, uh, no transcendental meaning, no reference to the state of being, which is ultimately consciousness, you know, then it, it fills our hearts with compassion. We have to say, my God, how do these people even stand existing? when their lives are so separated from the source, you know, so alienated from the reality. I remember being kind of like that. At times when I was overwhelmed by the exterior world. And there's a kind of existential suffering that goes along with that. There's a kind of feeling not oneself. And of course, this is exactly true. But because the people in general have no knowledge about consciousness, about God, even though they may be, you know, nominally religious, but they don't really understand and they don't really believe the philosophy that everything comes from consciousness even though their actual experience is that it does, 
but they've been so pounded with these stories of the of the atheistic materialistic reductionistic scientific you know so-called scientific story of the world they've caved in they have nowhere to stand they have no inner reality and no confidence in their own experience instead they believe what others have told them and what others tell you is always a lie meant to exploit you and use you. This is the truth. Now, the rare exceptions to this that prove the rule are when the Universal Mother, in whatever form, huh? but always transcendental, usually in the form of a scripture or someone teaching a scripture, tells you, no, all this is Maya. All of this is an illusion. It's simply a verbal trick to get you to not believe in yourself and to believe in something external to yourself and to try to attain the aims of the external world. To be rich, powerful, beautiful, knowledgeable, famous, huh? or in the pseudo-religious sense, renounced and austere and heavy, you know? <laughs> it's not like that. Real self-realization isn't like that at all because what do we care for wealth beyond the bare maintenance of the body? And what do we care for beauty when it only gets us entangled in relationships that are ultimately exploitative and disappointing? And the same goes for fame. Fame is useless because it's somebody else's opinion of oneself. And if you start believing other people's opinions of yourself, well, you're going to be in trouble. And the same goes with power. Power is ultimately destructive to the person who holds it. What is it? Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And my God, how many times have we seen in history where a person gains power by hook or by crook, usually by a crook, <laughs> and then it destroys them morally? Isn't it? So what are the use of all these things? What, are the, what is the use of knowledge when that knowledge has no relationship with God? who gives liberation from birth and death and suffering. And what good is renunciation and religion when it is only aimed at acquiring these other material opulences that we just rejected? <laughs> That's false religion. The real religion is only love love of God or goddess in any of their forms or names and their devotees. Love and service, love and service. This is the real religion. And it doesn't make us rich for sure, nor famous, nor powerful. Huh? And whatever knowledge we acquire in the course of reaching these things, we pretty much throw away as useless. And we don't have much really attraction for uh, renunciation and austerity and all that kind of stuff. Um, because wh what is the use of making great efforts with the body 
when the body is due to be destroyed in due course. What's the use of it? It's useless. So just like we were talking about the difference between the monkey, the baby monkey and the baby cat, the kitten. The baby monkey has to hold on tight and make a big effort to cling to the mother. But the baby kit, kitten or cat just allows the mother to pick him up by the scruff of his neck and take him to safety. So this is the attitude <laughs> of those who practice the sharanagati, the prapati, self-surrender method, that mother will take care. Huh? Mother cat, mother lion <laughs> will take care. Why? Because I surrender to her. She says in the scriptures, I offer this salvation free of charge. You just have to ask for it. And how do you ask for it? By sincere prayer. And that prayer is based in mantras. So what it boils down to is just chant these mantras. Huh? We've taught so many wonderful mantras and we're going to teach so many more wonderful mantras coming from scripture, Shastra. Not making these things up now. Uh, they're not ours. The knowledge isn't ours. We don't take credit for it. We don't take responsibility for it. It's coming from scriptures. It's coming from higher sources, higher authorities than human. So how does it feel to actually put this into action? Well, over the last two and a half years that I've been involved with the Sri Vidya, by the mercy of my sannyas guru and others, my mantra guru and so on, that I would say that my stress and my uh, worries and cares have decreased 99%. 99%. I still have, you know, just this tiny little bit of anxiety sometimes. But then every time I begin to chant my mantra, her love just floods through me. I can feel it. It's tangible. It's real. And over the last few weeks, this is something new. I've kind of, in a way, I feel like I've, I've hit the bottom. I've, I've come to rest on something solid within. Something very strong and reliable, you know, like the earth. But inside, in consciousness. It's kind of hard to describe. Probably sounds a little crazy. <laughs> but after chanting goddess mantras, actually, since I was, uh, since I first came to Tiruvannamalai four years ago, first I started chanting Gayatri mantra, huh? the famous Gayatri mantra, which is known for bringing people to salvation, to liberation, to moksha. And I chanted, I was chanting it like Japa, day and night. And something, some very interesting things happened to me. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But then when I got into Maha Shodashi Mantra, oh, this is a whole nother level. Very hard to describe. But it gives a feeling of certainty. It gives a feeling of finality. Like, you've been chasing this knowledge, huh? You've been worrying about whether you got it right. You've been trying to research all the details and find out how it works. Huh? We have this relentless curiosity that drives you. And you finally, you, now, you finally got it. This is it. And so 
even that search, that driven kind of feeling, oh, I have to look into this, I have to figure it out, even that is going away. And I feel like the kitten, just waiting for mommy to come and grab me by the scruff of the neck. <laughs> So it means I have very little interest in pursuing any external goals, you know. I mean, it's not like I'm going to drop doing the videos or anything like that. I kind of have to do that. <laughs> That's also a part of my nature. It has to do with my, my Mercury being with the Sun in the 12th house. I have to talk to people about spiritual things, about liberation, or I don't feel like I'm myself. It's part of who I am. So I'm very glad to have the opportunity to wish you all a very happy and prosperous new year, full of the blessings of the Mother Goddess Lakshmi, and all of her different shaktis and powers. Huh? May they all manifest within you. May they bring you to the ultimate realization of full enlightenment and self-realization. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung.